So I, th I think today we really want to understand, um, I, I, you've, you've laid out very clearly where your responsibility starts and finishes and where the MOD's responsibility starts and finishes, and I understand that. But the, you know, the, the problem we've, I mean, how has this red snapper name got out there? If it's simply a recruiting, um, you know, a recruiting team or whatever, an HR management, whatever, how has that got out there where mm -hmm. multiple cases of servicemen who've left or who are still in are using this name? Does that not suggest that somewhere someone is going out and saying this? It does. And, and I, why would they do that? I've no, I, mean, I really can't answer that. The first this has come to my attention um, has been through this process. So in the last, we've supported this contract for four years, three years, and then the rebid one year since the, into the new contract period for us. This has never come up across that period. So I've never had... So the command team have the ability to sort of draw down training support from us. And if this had come up historically, I'm convinced they would have said to me, for goodness sakes, we need to have a training package to re-remind all of the individuals that are representatives of MODI IHAT and should be, not be saying this name. So this is the first I've heard of it in the last sort of month or so. And I, can't, I, don't, I genuinely can't answer that. I don't know. Yeah, OK. Um, can, you, can you just uh, tell us how the IHAT contract between the MOD and Red Snapper operates? Um, it's, a, it's a broad question. Um, how, so how, how long does the contract run for? Is two it years. Two years. It's two years. It, it, so we rebid in. Uh, it's, the, the new contract period for us began in February 16. So the bid process was at the end, back end of 15. I think there was four or five bidders at that point. We won again. It's for two years with the ability for them to renew for a further year should they choose to. But that's 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 in their give, not mine. Um, we have, a, we have a contracts management team, which is a team of about half a dozen individuals in um, our London headquarters. We have um, an on-site representative who's full-time on-site down there, embedded, if you like a de facto HR manager. Um, we have monthly meetings with the command team, um, which I attend, or another member of the executive team attends, um, and that deals with very much sort of contracts management issues to do with the delivery of staff, the welfare of staff, the training of staff, etc. Okay. Um, it's not open-ended then. So, so no. can you just clarify um, f for me, the staff you provide, wh where's the line between the military staff, so the Royal Naval Police, and your team? Um, I can give you my best answer to that, um, the command team would be, be able to give a better answer. Um, clearly, the team we provide, again, working under the control supervision of the MOD, are, are embedded within, with the Royal Navy Police representatives. And I actually don't know the number of RNP staff who work on the IHAC contract alongside uh, the staff we provide. I believe it's in upwards of about 15 to 20, but I hope my estimate is sure, right there. Sure. Again, it's, it's not part of my role yeah. to know that. Um, and of course, as civilian investigators with no designated powers... Well, that's what I was going to ask. I mean, what, what are the level of powers that have been conferred on you by the MOD? Zero. They have, they have no powers whatsoever. They are civilian investigators uh, right across the market. Civilian investigators have no designated, designated powers if they're working through a third party provider such as the business I represent. <laughs> they, it's always the Royal Navy Police who um, are there to, um, if you like, enact a, a, an arrest if that's the appropriate action. The civilian investigators, and this happens in territorial policing and right across the market, are then support to that process, conducting an interview, etc. So is there, is there an instance where Red Snapper, and I, I'm, ju I'm just sort of really trying to understand this, Red Snapper provide the investigators, do they operate independently? No. Or is there always someone from the MOD with them? Yeah. At all times? Oh, I mean, not at all times, no. And again, a question to ask the command team, but my take on that would be, uh, you know, it's completely appropriate for um, civilian investigators within territorial policing, within all contexts outside of the MOD, to um, work autonomously to interview a witness, for example, 
But it would not be appropriate, again, in my understanding, for um, a civil investigator without designated powers to enact any sort of arrest or anything where... Yeah. So, so if, you, if you turned up to my door and said, um, we want to speak to you about X, Y and Z, and I just said, no thanks, what, 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 what would Red Snapper's response be? Well, it's not a Red Snapper response. It's, it's an MOD. Or what would your staff's response be? Well, I mean, they would be trained, I assume, by the MOD to, I mean, it, like, again, within any policing context, if you turn up at a witness's doorstep... And Sorry, I'm, I thought, I thought they, they were not police. No, but they they are they. Um, I'm talking about civilian investigators who work. Yeah, so two people. civilian investigators turn up at my door, start asking me questions. And I say no thanks. I've been through two investigations on this already. I'm not interested. Go away. What 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 do they would have to go away? I mean, my assumption would be they would have to leave. Right. And they have no that. powers to um, arrive on a base. No. No powers to threaten arrest. No, absolutely not. I mean, again, I'm talking with my best knowledge. I, I would ask you, I'm not an expert here. I would ask you to talk to the command team on that. But my understanding would be... Sorry, certain, to speak to who? The command team, the IHA command team. But I certainly would know that for, for certain, they have absolutely no powers of arrest. Of course not. It should be. Um, okay, so, so what do you make of the... Um, <coughs> Obviously, you read the newspapers. You see what we get here in, in our inquiry, um, and there is there's not one or two cases of this happening. There are a significant number, significant enough for for um, someone to take the view that that something's broken down the system. What do you of what happened? Just to be precise, of um, investigators turning up saying, "I'm a retired detective inspector," and threatening arrest or trying to get onto bases. Or, um, well, turning up at ex-girlfriend's do, houses. Do, do you act, I, I mean, so, sorry to talk over there. I mean, we see the first I had been made aware of this has been through this process. In the four years that I've um, run a business which has provided the MOD I have with services, this has not been brought to my attention. We've never had an HR, we've never had a, a, a command team meeting where we've been asked, for example, to intervene with training because these sorts of events are happening. So, uh, is there actual sort of examples, actual incidents, and named people? Well, yes, there are, is the answer to that. Um, right. there, there are, um, you know, we are trying to get clearance and to come and speak to this committee. Right. Right. Um, they've come forward, they've given evidence to um, legal teams um, saying that this has gone on. And, you know, it's not a sort of, um, you know, I would say from the outset that nobody has a problem with doing things properly and with investigating these matters, absolutely. And anybody who breaks the law, um, regardless of whether they're on operations or not, should feel the full force of the law. Um, the problem is, is that there seems to be this situation that's come about where we have young men and women who may have left the army, been out for some time, having people turn up on the door saying they are from your organisation. Um, asking quite intrusive questions without any warning whatsoever. Um, and so our question is, you know, who's, who's sort of controlling this? Who, you know, do they receive any notification of that, for well, example? I mean, I cannot answer that because um, I am not part of the operational planning team. I do not give out operational instruction, nor does any member of my team. However, what I would say in response is it is a great... Sort of if uh, you know if it, if it is going on, it's it's completely unnecessary that it should be because of the access this this team has the uh, command team has to um, extensive training support. You know we are able and, on, and ready to intervene if there are any performance management issues, and we can be on site sort of addressing these issues. And it's just such a shame that if this has gone on, that I haven't been, the business has not been asked to intervene, to sit down with all the investigators, to make sure they present themselves correctly, etc. But in terms of who at the IHAT command team day to day sets out operational tasks to interview witness X or um, visit suspect Y, I'm simply not involved in that part, in that part of the business. Okay. Can, can I just give you a, an example? Because <clears throat> The problem, you know, and this is a problem I've come across a number of times, I've only been in this place for a year, but people see, you know, I do get the impression at times from 
the MOD from other organisations that you know we just sort of make this stuff up. <laughs> Um, you know, we, we, which is simply not the case. We have people come and tell us. We then try and get to a place where they can do that in public and get it on the record, so we can investigate that. Clearly, with this, it, it's very difficult to do so. Um, but to give an example, uh, this was in Hillary Meredith, Meredith's evidence. There's one person who's contacted me who's actually acquitted within the military ten years ago, and then was faced with an arrest at the barracks gate by somebody purporting to be from Red Snapper. Have you heard of this before? No. I mean, I, I, beyond seeing Hillary set it okay. out. Okay. His commanding officer questioned them in their reference, and they found out, first of all, they were not police officers, and there was no authority to arrest, and they went away. <coughs> and you've never, you've never heard of that within your organisation? No. I mean, if, if I had, we Can you would... look into this and, and write to us and let us know? I mean, these, these guys aren't making it up. I, of course... Or do you think they are? I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. Um, as I set out a moment ago, it's, it's what, what, what I'm struggling to reconcile, I suppose, is the four-year history we have with this contract, um, supplying these services. And this is only coming out now. That's right. I accept that, so there's a delay in time. But what these, what, what these people may do is see other cases in the paper. There's been good work in, in you know, the Sun and the Mail, and, and they'll think, actually, yeah, that happened to me. Why, why this investigator turned up at my door and started my, my, asking my, me questions? My take on this, Mr Mercer, is because of... Um, I mean, some of this, I, I got the impression, was second, third hand. However, my take on it is it must be happening because it's too much of a pattern. Yeah, that's um, precisely my view. Uh, exactly, and I, I and I share it. Um, I simply cannot respond meaningfully at the moment because it's new. It's we have the tools, as I say, to sit the team down and deliver extensive intervention training, saying, "Look, for goodness' sake, you know, they would not put like this, of course, but you know, this is the correct way you engage with the suspect. Here are the protocols. This is what you say." So, you know... It, you just don't recognise it? I don't. No, I okay. don't. Absolutely. I, I just want to bring James Gray, but just before I do, when you heard of this, what did you do within your company? Did you do anything to I had a meeting, find out whether this had happened? I had a meeting with the command team. I, I mean, I don't, I don't have, if you like, the authority... When you say command team, you're talking about the MOD? Uh, the IHATS command team. Oh, I have. And did you talk about this case? Yes, we talked about all of Hillary Meredith's comments, yeah. Okay, and what was your view? Well, the view, I don't, there was no view taken. I, I asked them to come back to me to explain, you know, how I firstly, um, you know, in the knowledge that I'd be attending this meeting, setting out, you know, how I was surprised, for example, the company's name was being used, Red Snapper was being used, they weren't, individuals were not represent, explaining they were representing MOD I had. Um, and effectively, what I've been told is it's being looked into and they'll come back with a response, and that response... I expect to receive on the 27th of September, which is my next meeting with them. Okay. Thank you. James.